In the annals of punk rock history, few bands have left a profound impact as the Dead Kennedys. Formed in San Francisco in 1978, this incendiary group emerged during a time of social and political upheaval, using their music as a potent platform for social commentary and activism. With their blistering punk sound, scathing lyrics, and unapologetic criticism of authority, the Dead Kennedys became a rallying point for a generation seeking to challenge the status quo. The Dead Kennedys were the brainchild of Eric Reed Boucher, a politically outspoken poet and activist, along with East Bay Ray Raymond John Pepperell on guitar, Klaus Floride Jeffrey Lyle on bass, and D.H. Pellegrino on Darren Henley on drums. In 6025, Carlos Cadona, as the first drummer, the band quickly gained notoriety for their aggressive sound and provocative lyrics. In 1979, the Dead Kennedys released their first single, California Uballs, a searing critique of California Governor Jerry Brown and his perceived authoritarian tendencies. The song catapulted the band into punk rock limelight, earning them a fiercely loyal following. Okay. Throughout their career, the Dead Kennedys fearlessly had tackled controversial and politically charged subjects. Their debut album, Fresh Fruit for Rotting Vegetables, 1980, was a raw and unapologetic critique of American society, capitalism, and political corruption. Tracks like Holiday in Cambodia and Kill the Poor are prime examples of the band's unflinching social commentary. The Dead Kennedys' music often questioned the status quo, ridiculing the excesses of consumerism, the military-industrial complex, and the growing influence of corporations on the political landscape. Jello Biafra's confrontational lyrics, delivered with biting sarcasm and wit, made the band a leading voice in the punk rock movement and an emblem of resistance. The band's outspoken nature and controversial album artwork attracted the attention of authorities, leading to legal battles. In 1985, the Dead Kennedys faced a high-profile obscenity trial over the artwork for their album Frankenchrist, which featured a painting by H.R. Geiger. The trial ended in an acquittal, but the incident underscored the band's commitment to freedom of speech and the punk ethos of pushing boundaries. Despite the challenges, the Dead Kennedys remained steadfast in their dedication to fighting censorship and promoting free expression. Their battle against social injustices and oppressive systems solidified their position as a band that refused to be silenced. The Dead Kennedys' influence on the punk rock genre and beyond is immeasurable. Their music and activism have inspired generations of musicians, artists, and activists to use their platforms to challenge authority, speak out against injustice, and advocate for change. Beyond their musical prowess, the Dead Kennedys' legacy extends to their DIY approach and independent spirit. They founded their own record label, Alternative Tentacles, which continues to release music from various artists to this day. In conclusion, the Dead Kennedys will forever be remembered as a punk rock pioneers who used their music as a megaphone for social and political activism. Their unapologetic critique of society, combined with their rebellious spirit, made them an enduring symbol of resistance and a shining example of the power of music to affect change. As we look back on their legacy, we are reminded of the importance of challenging authority, speaking truth to power, and using creativity as a force for good. The Dead Kennedys' influence will undoubtedly echo through the corridors of punk rock history for generations to come.